good day. My name is Michael Estep with Excalibur Data Systems. I'm one of the senior solution architects. Today we're going to explore call scripts within Halo. How we get tickets into Halo would be from an email. We could get it in from our portal. We could also get it in from our call screen. So if you have a call system that can pop a URL up onto your your laptop screen or your desktop screen, your monitor, then we can use Halo to import tickets. So what we're currently looking at here is the configuration page, and I'm going to go up to the call management. Out of the box, our optional features here is call scripts. I'm going to go ahead and click this little plus button, which will turn our call scripts on, and then we'll kind of explore what we've got in here. Out of the box, you are not going to have a call script. I went ahead and set one up for an example so that we can explore it today. So I called this one standard call. You could call it really anything that you would like to call it. And we're going to take a look and see what we have down in our questions. So I've done each one of these that has different choices and we'll explore the different choices that we have just so we can see how they work. So this first one is enter a value. And it simply is a question and an input type of a text box. We can use a straight text box, with, as you see here. Um, or we can use a memo field, which makes a bigger text box. And we'll see that in a moment when we go through the call script. You go ahead and save it after you get everything in that you want to do there. My next example is make a choice. So it is exactly as it sounds. What is the question I'm going to pop up on the screen? And then what are the choices that I have? Now, the nice thing about these choices is you'll see this, uh, this one down here that says the next question will be next in the sequence. So looking back behind here, and when we go back, we'll see that we have questions, and next in sequence simply means that I'm going to do the next one that I have in sequence. However, I could also make this more of a workflow, and I could skip the next one in sequence if that doesn't make sense for what I'm using here. So these two choices I have are issue, and I'm actually going to skip whatever the next one is and go to or are calling about a desktop or a laptop. And you'll see why here in a moment. We'd go ahead and save this button. We'd either have radio buttons or drop down lists. And then we'd go ahead and save it. The third one that we're looking at is show a message. So in my example here, we're going to have an issue or a request. If it's a request, we're simply going to show a message to the call taker that please direct them to our portal so that we can gather all the information that we need whenever doing a request, whether it's a computer, new computer request or a new laptop or monitor, any of the other the requests that we might have, we would want to direct them to our portal to ensure that we get all of the questions answered that we need. This particular one is going to terminate the script when I hit this one. So it's going to go with our option of issue or request. I'm going to click request and it'll terminate the script after it pops this message up, and we'll see that as an example in a moment. The last one that we have here is I can actually populate a field on my incident form or whatever form that I'm using for taking these scripts, for taking calls. This one, I use this one as an example because it's great. In the system itself, we have the field name of impact. We might have that field name of impact on our portal. What does that mean? When a call taker is taking a call, they simply have to ask the question, how many employees are affected? Our impact will then give us a list of, questions, list of answers that we can then answer and fill in the impact field on our form. This particular one, we're also going to the next question. So like, let's take a look at how this actually works real time. If I go up to incident here and I'm going to start a new call, I'm actually going to start a new call down here, not a new ticket which will pop me over into another screen. As I stated before, if your call system can send a URL to your computer and pop up, I would not have to type this in and it would already have my name here because it would, knew that, it would know that I was calling. Once we come into the call screen, this is a great screen. I can see open tickets, total tickets open the last day, what tickets that I have open for this particular caller, etc. I also have this little button here since I have call scripts on it shows up in my call screen and I can click it and start that standard call script. So your first line support as they're coming up to speed, as they're getting trained, 
you can kind of walk them, have them walk through a call script, and they won't really have to know as much about the systems of your organization, and they can answer the questions and submit tickets. So today I have a caller, and I'm going to ask them, how may I help you today? Um, my laptop is not working. The screen, the screen does not come on when I power it up. So then they would simply click the next to go to my next question. This is not necessarily a question that my call taker would have to ask. They could just look and say, okay, I'm, this is an issue because it's a laptop. And they would go to the next one. And do we have a laptop or a desktop? I simply say laptop and I click next. And here's my list that I'm actually going to fill in the impact. So how many users or how many employees are affected by this issue? This may be a question they would ask. Well, if it's simply their laptop and a screen that's not coming up, it's more than likely a single user that's being affected. If this was an issue with a piece of software, Exchange or Teams, I, nothing's working, my entire department's not working, then we might have multiple users and of course nobody's able to get into Exchange, we'd have an organization wide. The nice and effective thing about this is when we ask, answer these questions, it's going to automatically prioritize our tickets and it helps prioritize our tickets a little bit easier and a little bit better. So then it comes to the end, we would have the call taker simply read off of this. Thank you for calling today. I have entered a problem ticket for you and you should be contacted by a technician shortly. And this would end the call script. At this point in time, the call would be hung up. They could go ahead and log a ticket and complete it out. One thing I might want to do is I might want to enter a summary. If I don't enter a summary, it is going to give me a generic summary of that it was a call, who took the call, and then what time they took the call. So we'll go ahead and complete this because we can actually see the ticket after it's been completed and all the questions that I was answered have been here in my description. Now that one field, the impact field that we had automatically input is already filled in, whereas I can also ask for the urgency as well and they could get the higher, medium, or low and have all of our fields filled in that we would need to be filled in right off of the call. One last thing I'd like to show you. Um, well, let's go through another call here real quick. So I'm going to do a new call and we're going to do a request this time to see how that works. So once again, the URL would pop up. It would have my name already in here. I'm having to manually put it in because I'm kind of showing you through this demo. I don't have my call system popping it up. So this time they call in, it's a standard call. We could have this automatically, which I'm going to show you in a moment where to set that. As soon as the call comes in, we could have it pop up our call script and then they're ready to go, ready to answer the question just as soon as they get connected to the call. How have I helped you today? I need a new laptop. So this is clearly a request. They would hit next. Issue or request. We would click request. Click on the next button and our call taker would then read. Please go to our portal to log your request. This will allow us to gather the required information. You can reach our portal at www.rportal.com. Click on the next. They would be hanging up the call. I would simply resolve this ticket because I could still want to make sure that I capture all of the calls that I have coming in and what they were coming in for. And then I would complete this one and it would be automatically resolved and input into our system. And you'll see that it is in a closed state. So I do also have a first call resolution. However, this is not necessarily an incident at this request and we could then make sure that we get those things out. One last thing that I want to show you is back in our call management, we have general settings. In the general settings here is the URL that you would put in from your phone system so that they could populate what the caller phone number is and they would pop up on your screen and automatically take you to that call that we saw. Some other options down here, something to note, if I had multiple call scripts, I can actually have it pop up when the, when the call comes in to ask each time which call script that they might want to use. So maybe I'm using a hardware call versus a software call. First question before I even click on my call script, is this a hardware or a software issue today? 
they could then go through and click on the call script and move there. Or I could just have it automatically come up with the standard call script every single time a call comes in and it can flow through there. Well, I appreciate everybody joining me today. And that is all that, that I have to show you. Please join us for any future videos that we have. Thank you.